Welcome to The Messenger. I'm glad you're joining us again as we're studying the Word of God. We're in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, as we're looking at the origin of all things and what God says about his creation and what he did as he created all things. Amen. It's just a wonderful thing to know what God has done. God revealed this to us. We should study this and know it. We should, we should get familiar with it. God let us know about the origin of all things. What a powerful thing. How could we know otherwise how things came about except God reveals it to us? You know, you can, know, you can only know about God what he reveals to you. How can we find out about God and what he's done except he reveals it to us? And that's why we love the word of God so much. God has revealed to mankind the origin of all things. God is saying right here in the word of God that I created all this. It didn't just explode and, and evolve and just come about by itself or on its own ability. God says, I created these things. Now, we're in chapter one of the book of Genesis, and we just came in the last, in the last telecast. We, we talked about verse 21. God created the seas, the creatures, and the living thing that move, which the waters abound according to their own kind, and every winged bird of the air. God created them, and God saw that it was good. You know, we're going to see in the word of God in the book of Genesis, God created, not made. Certain things, certain things God created. Now, the Hebrew word, as I said before, for create is bara, B-A-R-A. -A. It means to bring into being or create something out of nothing. We'll see that God created some things. You know, God calls them things that are not as though they were. Amen. He, he speaks things into existence. It doesn't have to be nothing there, but if God speaks, there it is. He can create things. He can create something out of nothing. But we also see something else happening here in the book of Genesis 2. We'll see where God made things. He made things. And that is to make something out of something that already exists. When it says God made this or God made that, he's making something out of something that already exists. He's making something new out of something that already exists. We see that here as well. So the Bible in its entirety condemns the theories of both cosmic and organic evolution. So many people are teaching this cosmic and this organic evolution. Things just evolved from that. The Bible in its entirety condemns these theories, both of them, cosmic and organic evolution. But the Bible declares in no uncertain terms that God created all the material and moral creations. God, in fact, created all the material and moral creations. Amen. The firmament God spread out. And remember what that word firmament is. The firmament is the open expanse of space surrounding the earth. God stretched it out. God created it. God caused it to exist. Not evolution. So many people are involved in believing in evolution. And I can't believe it, saints of God. I can't believe it, church world that some folks still believe that the world is flat. In this 21st century, people believe anything and everything. They believe that the earth is flat right now. Even though God said in his word years ago, years ago, God said that he is the God that dwells above the, dwells above the circle of the earth. That's what God said. But people just won't believe God. They want to believe anything else. God already told us that the earth is circular. Amen. He says, I'm the God that dwells above the circle of the earth. He said that thousands of years ago. Amen. That the earth is not flat. God said so. But people believe anything. 
They believe in this cosmic and organic revol evolution. But God says no. That's why I give you Genesis. That's why I told Moses to write this. That's why I, my spirit inspired Moses to write this because I want you to know I declare in no uncertain term that I am the creator of all the material and moral creation that you see. I created it. That's why God gave us this word. That's why Genesis is here to let you know this didn't just evolve. No such thing as evolution. It just evolved. God created all things. And God declares it. He says, I'm the creator of everything. Amen. There is no power, the Bible says, but the power of God. Amen. All power is in his hand. Hallelujah. So God, that's why God told us this in the word of God, because he wanted us to know that he is, in fact, the creator of all things. Amen and amen. So let's continue as we search out the word of God and discover what God has done and what he says. In verse, we're in verse 21, amen, rather uh, verse 22. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply. God blessed them, blessed too. All of, these, all of these creatures, living creatures that are in the waters, all the birds that are flying in the, uh, uh, right in the firmament of the heavens, below the firmament of the heavens, right up of the heavens. He said, now God blesses them in verse 22. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply, fill the waters in the seas, and let the birds multiply on the earth. Amen. God said, let them multiply. Let them be fruitful and let them multiply. What did he say? After their own kind. Sparrows be more sparrows. Robins be more robins. Uh, certain fish be more of that certain type of fish. Amen. After their own kind. They, they multiplied. And they were fruitful. Amen. They were fruitful and they multiplied. And, and, and this is what God said about them. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the waters in the sea and let the birds multiply on the earth. And verse 23. Verse 23, God says this. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So on the fifth day, the waters were filled with creatures. The sky was filled with birds. The command of God was to be fruitful to them and multiply. And so they begin to multiply. Amen. Let's go down to verse 24. Listen to what God says then. Then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to its kind. Now God is going to bring forth living creatures on the earth. He filled the seas. He filled the heavens with the birds, you know, the, the birds right there. He, he put the lights in place. Amen. In the firmament. Amen. Now God says this. And then God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according. Here we are. According to its kind. Amen. According to its kind. Cattle and creeping things and beasts of the earth each according to its kind. We keep seeing that. And it was so, according to its kind. God made each creature himself in days five and in six. God made each creature himself according to this in verses five and six. God is the creator. All these creatures, all the animals you see, all the fish you see, all the creatures in the water, all the birds flying in, in the heavens, God says, I'm the creator of all of them. They didn't just happen. I created them. That's why Genesis is so important. We have to understand where we came from, how we came about. And all that's right here in the book of Genesis. Amen. So that's pretty powerful. God made each creature himself in days five and six. 
right here in the book of Genesis, we see it in days five and six. No evolution. It was no evolution. All of a sudden, something starts growing and it turns into a bird or something else. No, it was no evolution. In verses five and in, in verses five and six, God said, I created all of these things. Amen. He said, I was the one that created all these things. So God is the creator of all these things. Amen. And that's why Genesis is such a powerful, powerful thing to know about. Amen. And we want to get into something else right here. Uh, uh, now, in, 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 chapter, in chapter 1, verse uh, uh, 23, so the evening and the day was the fifth day. So we want to go into chapter 24. God said, let the earth bring forth those creatures. He brought forth the cattle according to the creeping things, and God saw that it was good. God created all these things. Amen. God was the one that created them. Now let's get into something else that is very powerful that we need to focus in on here in the book of Genesis. And that's Genesis. We're going down to Genesis chapter, we're in chapter 1, verse 26. Now we get into the creation of man here and something very important. We see something about God that I want to point out to you that's revealed here in the word of God to us. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 starts off with these words. Then God said, okay, that's the first thing. God said, now listen to this. Then God said, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, let us, plural, plural, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. God said this. Who is God talking to and why is this is the question. Because God, then God said, let us. Who is the us? It's the divine trinity. It's the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit that make up one God. Let's get into this a little bit, into the divine trinity. Genesis chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, talks a little bit about that, and we see this plura, plurality, this talk like this, let us, in quite a few places here in the Word of God. Listen to this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Then the Lord God said, look, the human beings have become like us. This is when they were building the Tower of Babel. He says, the human beings have become like us. Who is he talking to? This is the divine trinity that is discussing things among themselves. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Knowing both good and evil. And if they reach out, uh, no, this is, this, is, this is when they were talking about uh, uh, when, when, when they had eaten of the tree. I, I have to correct myself there. When they were eating of the tree and they had uh, the tree that had the knowledge of good and evil. This is what God said. Then the Lord God said, look, the human beings have become like us, knowing both good and evil. What if they reach out and take the fruit of the tree of life and eat it? Then they will live forever. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden and sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. God sent them out. This was after they fell. This was after they had sinned against God and their relationship with God was changed. And now man knew good and evil. He was no longer innocent. And we'll get into that as we study the book of Genesis. But I wanted to point something out to you. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 22, it says, the Lord said, look, the human beings have become like us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Not only that, you can go to Genesis chapter 11, verses 5 through 7. Listen to what God said here in this plurality that he's talking about, the divine trinity. Amen. Listen to what he's saying. But the Lord God sat down, came down to look at the city and the tower that the people were building. This was what I was talking about, the power of Babel. Look, he said, the people are united, and they all speak the same language. This was before God 
uh, uh, mixed up the languages so that they stopped building at the Tower of Babel. After this, nothing, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Listen to what he says in verse 7. Here we see this plurality, this, this let us. Again, in verse 7 it says, Come, let us, come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages, and then they won't be able to understand each other. Come, let's go down. Amen. Remember what he said here? Let us make man in our image. We see that again. Listen to Isaiah 6, verse 8. Then I heard the Lord asking. This is what Isaiah's testimony is about what he heard God said. Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? He's saying to Isaiah, who will go for us? I said, here am I. Send me. Isaiah said, I heard that too. God said, he was having a conversation and he said, who will go for us? And I said, Lord, here am I. Send me. But I heard that. I heard that same type of language. That's in Genesis 1, 26 when God said, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness not only that listen to John in the New Testament John 17 verses 10 through 12 all who are mine belong to you and you have given them to me this is Jesus speaking so they bring me glory now I am departing from the world they are staying in this world but I'm coming to you Holy Father you have given me your name, I have given them, I have get, you have given me your name. Now protect them by the power of your name so that they will be united just as we are. Now listen to this, verse 12. During my time here on earth, I protected them by the power of thy name, of the name you gave me. I guarded them so that none was lost except the head of destruction as the scriptures foretold. Listen to this. This is John 17, verse 21. I pray that they will be one just as you and I are one. As they are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world may know. Amen. This is what the word of God says about the divine trinity. And listen to this. It gets a little deeper here. 1 John 5, 7. 1 John 5, 6, 7, and 8. Listen to this. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but by the water and blood. And it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is true. Listen to what 1 John 5 7 says, for there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit, these three are one. Amen? Are one. Amen. And there are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. These three agree as one. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are one. The Father is God. Listen to what it says in 1 John, in John's Gospel. In the beginning, it says in John's Gospel, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things that were made were made by Him, for Him, and without Him wasn't nothing made that was made. Amen. Jesus says that He is the Word of God. He's the living Word of God of God, that he had no beginning and has no end. He is God. Amen. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. Amen. All three. One God. Three in one. Now, there's some things 
you got to admit about God that you just aren't going to be able to totally grasp and apprehend. You know, you, you're not going to be able to understand uh, some things about God. Because after all, he is God. God could tell us a lot of things that we wouldn't even have a clue as to what they mean. Because he's God with all knowledge, with all wisdom. But God is revealing to us some significant things here in the book of Genesis about himself. He said, then God said in Genesis 1:26, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Amen. According to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air, the cattle and all the earth, over every creeping thing on the earth. This is what God said. Let's break this down a little bit. Let's break this down. The Bible doesn't say that the angels were made in the image of God, that animals were either. But God says in his word that we were made in the image of God. So notice what it says here. It says, let us make man in our image. Let me deal with this image for a minute. God said, let us make man. This was the divine trinity, plural person. Pronoun. Amen. There are three separate and distinct persons in one Godhead. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Remember what I read to you in 1 John 5, 7. There's three that bear record in heaven, Father, Word, and Spirit. These three are one. Amen. Listen to what God says about this image. He said, let's make man in our image, in our image, after our likeness. Amen. Image is a Hebrew word, T-S-E-L-E-M. This Hebrew word that is used here in the book of Genesis concerning image, it means shape. That's the first thing it means. So you can say here in the word of God that God is saying this. Let us make man in our shape. Because this word, T-S-E-L-E-M, this Hebrew word used for image right here, means shape. Amen. That's the first thing it means, shape. The second thing that it, remain, uh, uh, that it means is resemblance. So we can say that again. Let us make man in our shape and in our resemblance. Amen. So man is going to be made or created in the image of God, the shape and resemblance. And this always refers to the outward form and not to attributes, but it's talking about this, this word T-S-E-L-E-M, this Hebrew word, it refers to the outward form, not to the attributes. We'll get a little bit into that. But it's talking about the shape and resemblance. So you can say this. God said, let us make man in our shape and in our resemblance. Amen. In our shape and in our resemblance. Or to resemble the model, shape, the outward part. So could it be that man kind of looks like God a little bit? Amen. This is something to think about. Could it be that man looks a little bit like God because we're in his, according to this Hebrew word, T-S-E-L-E-M. It means we are shaped like him and we resemble him. Amen. So let's get into the word of God to see what that means. In Genesis 5, 3, it says that Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness. After his image, and he named him Seth. So Seth came out, talking about after his own image and his likeness, Seth came out a human being that looked and resembled somewhat of his father Adam, right? He may not have looked exactly like Adam, but you could tell he was of Adam's kind. Amen? That he was of Adam's likeness. Amen? After Adam's image, Seth. So God says, let us create man in our image, in our shape, 
to resemble in our resemblance. Amen. That's exactly what happened when Adam had a son. Listen to Genesis 9, 6. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. Listen to this. For in the image of God he made man. In the image of God. What image? Shape and resemblance of God. We were created. Can't get any better than that. God could have made us in all kinds of different images. He could have made us to resemble the animals or something. But God chose to make man. And man is the only, of, the only one of God's creation that we have record of that is made in the image and likeness of God. Man is the only one, not the angels. Don't say the angels were created in the image of God and likeness and resemblance of God, but it says man was created. Let us create man in our image and in our likeness. We're running out of time on this broadcast, but I want you to join me again as we look at how man was created in the shape in the resemblance of God. Amen. And what that means and how God did this, we have the record of this right here in the word of God. For man is in the image of God. Hallelujah. And it has some significance here. It has a lot to say about God's purpose for man. Join us again here at the messenger as we study the book of Genesis here and we get knowledge and wisdom into what God created, its purpose, how God created man's destiny and man's purpose. As we learn more about God, our God, with all knowledge, with all wisdom, with all power, the ancient of days, you know, it's going to be something else when we see God one day. And let me end with saying this. If you see an angel, you've seen a created being. and You've seen something that is very unusual. But when you see God, when we lay our eyes on God, we're going to be looking at a person for the first time that had no beginning and has no end. That is eternal. That is, in fact, the creator of all things. So join us again here on The Messenger as we get back into the book of Genesis in the Word of God. And we're going to study more and talk more about how we were created, our purpose, made in the resemblance, the shape, the image of God himself. Hallelujah. What a wonderful thing. How God created us, mankind, the human being. In the name of Jesus, join us again here at The Messenger. God bless you. We'll be looking for you again here on The Messenger as we study the book of Genesis. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.